Hello and welcome to MIP TV. And with me, as always, is Bob Cook from Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. And we're doing one of our regular book reviews. And this is a corker of a book, The Theory and Practice of Group Psychotherapy by Irving D. Yalom, a firm favourite author for those studying or are, who we are involved in counselling and psychotherapy, Bob. Absolutely. I mean, you can't really study counselling and psychotherapy without reading one of Yellow's books. No. I mean, you know, he, he, this book became a bestseller. It was his first major book. Yeah, I think it was the early 50s, actually. Uh, the, the edition I've got is 1970, but it was a real, real bestseller. And that's how he made his name, really. I mean, in later times, he went on to write a lot more of the sort of books from his uh, clinical vignettes of his work, from Love's Executioner to Staring into the Sun. Many people have read these books, of course, but he made his name uh, as a clinician with this book. So what do you think contributed to this book's popularity? Because if you think about it at the times, you know, individual psychotherapy, the humanistic revolution, self-actualization movement, there's a lot of books uh, on the bookshelf about self-actualization, human growth movement. Uh, but I think this was the first book which really looked in depth to the idea of group psychotherapy and the idea that people in a group could actually work together to look at the existential issues uh, of the day. So, for example, Yalom was an existential, existentialist psychotherapist. Get my dyslexia in place here. Yeah, have it. This psychotherapist <laughs> looking at the major existence core issues of identity, um, real search for the self. And he thought that, um, you know, working with groups would help in this energetic force so they could share mutual validation and normalize their internal existential issues. Oh, fascinating. Yes, so ex existence, existence precedes essence, as Sartre may, may very well have put it. Yeah, so, so uh, the first of its kind, I'm guessing the book was the first of its kind, which added to its popularity. Yeah. How, does it, how does it speak now to modern psychotherapists and the modern world of psychotherapy, Bob? Well, if you, you know, I've been a psychotherapist since 1985. In 1986, 86, 87, I started to run groups, psychotherapy groups, weekly. And in my height, um, in the middle 90s, I had five psychotherapy groups a week. Wow. Going. So I'm really um, an advocate, if you like, for group psychotherapy. Because it's an experiment, if you like, a laboratory where people can move from individual therapy to group therapy, say eight people for two hours a week, um, every week for as long as uh, the treatment goes on. Um, and they've got, a, they've got a safe place to actually explore their script or existential issues, if you like. Another way to put it, it's almost like a mini family culture. Oh, interesting. And do you, do you, do you think there's a distinct difference in the direction that people's well-being takes if they're if they're working in a group as opposed to working with a single therapist i think groups that are famously fantastically if that's a word powerful um place for people to feel safe to practice with other people sharing their internal world to external uh people if you like yeah. So instead of being trapped in their internal world and that biofeedback where there's no actual uh, break, but actually talking to external people, checking out their fantasies, meeting real people, people who've got the same existential issues as their own, that type of normalization, realizing they're not crazy or caught up in an isolated world, but actually people have the same familiar existential issues mm. that we all have in different intensities. It's such a marvelous marvelous empowering process yes and i guess that you know that that is something that is echoed maybe in people with the faith position but with an existential position because there is no the, the, the essence doesn't precede existence in other words you know the idea of existentialism as i understand it is we're born 
and then we go on to decide what our place is in the world and what the world really is. And I guess meeting like-minded people who have the same view of the world and the same view of their own humanity and the humanity of others mm. is mighty helpful. Absolutely. And as I said, the other really did propose a like family culture. Mm. Because a lot of these people came from very dysfunctional systems. Uh, and were part of their decisions were made really out of dis, defun, uh, dysfunctional family systems. So it, it was quite logical that, in a way, that their dysfunction came from another environment. Mm. So Yalom attempted to create, a, you know, create a healthy um, environment where the purpose was quite directive in some ways, and to enable people to explore different scripts, to take on new decisions, to get that wonderful validation which was often so missing from the early family systems and to action that action that in the real world yeah i mean it, it sounds it sounds like a real affirming place to be i just i just wonder if if someone was a student of counseling and psychotherapy how would the book support or inform them well it talks about how you can form a group how you can form a group it talks about the ideas that you have individual therapy first with the client, the client goes on to be part of a group, how you form a group, the idea of a group of Margo, talks about transferences that appear in groups that are, are born, if you like, from the individual therapy, but played out multi transferences with people in the room. So it talks about transferences, it talks about mirroring, it talks about merging, it talks about group dynamics, it talks about how pivotal the leader is in that process. And I think most of all, um, gives a voice to the different um, powerfulness of a group as vis-a-vis -vis individual therapy. So it would help a student really know how to start a group, how many people should be in a group, how you select people for a group, what types of people go in groups. He talks about problem patients, actually, actually uses the word problem patients, which is really interesting. He's talked about schizoid and hysterics and paranoids and talks about whether you would have one or two or three people in the groups, which is, so he would say, don't have too many schizoid, for example, or don't have too many borderlines. If you want to use those words, I prefer verb words. But he, talk, he, he talked about compositions of these groups mm. and how you start them and how long they go on and how long you'd run them for. So it was like the uh, first early training, if you like, in group analysis. It's really interesting, isn't it? And, and one that I think really lives in, um, you know, modern training, you know, the, the modern process group is a derivative, isn't it, yeah. of, 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 to some extent, group. It's not actually group therapy, but it, it's a derivative of that. As always, we're going to put a link in the bar below. Please put your comments and, you know, share what your experience is. If you've read this book, please pop it in the comments. Um, as always, Bob doesn't get um, paid for these book reviews. He does them as a labor of love and um so this is not a paid for video and make sure that you click on the link below because we'll put a link into there so that you can go and inspect the book should you want to buy it uh, the book we looked at today was the theory and practice of group so group psychotherapy by irving d alone and as always bob cook thank you very much thank you very much Robert Leo.